everyone welcome to Allen Digital today we are going to discuss about a new topic that is alternating currents in which briefly we will only study about LCR series AC circuit you have uh, many kinds of circuit in LC CR RC any kind of circuits can come RL circuit can come pure circuits can come but out of all those if you just study the generalized one that is your LCR series circuits other circuits can also be analyzed in a similar way so we'll start with LCR series circuit. So as the name suggests, it is a series LCR circuit. L is nothing but your inductor, C is your capacitor, R is your resistor. So here in this circuit, we have an alternating source. What is an alternating source? We already studied. Any current or voltage which varies alternatively in sign, positive to negative, negative to positive in regular intervals of time, such kinds of currents and voltages are known as alternating currents or voltages. So let's start. So we have three components here. This is resistor, capacitor and inductor. The alternating source which is connected here gives out a current which varies with uh, time uh, with respect to time as I is equal to I naught sin omega t where I naught is the peak value of the current and omega is the angular frequency of the AC which is applied. So these all things are just simple basics of alternating currents. So let's start. Now we know that whenever pure circuits of R, L or C you are using, there is a particular phase difference which you obtain with respect to your voltage and current. So individually first we will check the phase difference. Once individually it is analyzed, then we will just combine it in one phasor diagram to find out the relative phase difference between voltage and current in this entire circuit. So let's start with the resistor. So uh, if you look at the direction of current at any particular instant, through entire circuit direction of current will be same. It can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So let's consider the first case in which current is in clockwise direction like this. So through resistor it would be towards right side, through con uh, capacitor also right side, through inductor also right side. Now let's check the uh, voltage signal. So voltage signal can have any kind of phase difference. We generally know for pure circuits it, it, is, it is either 0 degree or it would be pi by 2 that is 90 degree. So for resistor it is 0 degree, for other two components it is 90 degree whether lagging or uh, leading, uh, leading any one of these. So let's consider the resistor first. So in the resistor it has no phase difference voltage with respect to current. So we are the phasor of VR is in the same direction of phasor of current. Second one is your uh, inductor. Current is like I told you at an instant direction of current through all three components are going to be the same. So through inductor current is uh, in the rightward direction that is basically anti-clockwise here yeah. and we know that in an inductor potential leads the current by 90 degree. So in this case potential is going to lead so you can see in this direction that is forward to your or you can also say anti-clockwise direction you will have 90 degree phase difference of voltage with respect to current. Similarly, when you come to capacitor, current direction remains constant in a pure capacitive circuit. Voltage across the capacitor lags behind the uh, current by 90 degree. So, we will be drawing it in clockwise direction that is downwards. So, when you combine all the three phase uh, diagrams, you will get a resultant voltage. So, what should be the resultant voltage across the circuit which is provided by this alternating source? It would be the sum of the potential difference between all the three components. Why? Because we know that any component which are connected in series, the sum of all the potential differences would give you the total potential difference which is applied. Now here the only small difference is, here the voltage that you have applied is an alternating voltage which is basically changing direction when it comes to regular intervals of time which means some or the other way it behaves like a vector but remember that although we are using vector analysis here. The components for which you are using vector analysis, that is voltage and current, they are not uh, vector quantities, they are skill, uh, they are even now uh, scalar quantities only, but still we are using vector analysis only because they are changing directions in regular intervals of time and because they are sinusoidally varying, they behave like a vector. So let's start the analysis. So we have here, a uh, first of all, the value of voltages, which uh, already you know, value of voltage is nothing but current into, into the restriction which is provided by any kind of component. So the first one you have is VR voltage drop across the resistor. It would be current through the resistor into the restriction that is R here. VC is voltage drop across the capacitor. It is equal to current into the restriction provided by it, which is nothing but reactance. But here we will be using XC, which is capacitive reactance. 
same goes with VL, VL will be equal to current into the inductive reactance that is going to be your XL. Now, exactly the same equations are valid for the peak values through each component as well as the RMS values for each component. So, you can see through a uh, resistance if you want to find out RMS value of voltage it is IRMS that is RMS current into the restriction. Same goes with BC RMS it is IRMS into XC and VL RMS it is IRMS into XL. So, basically uh, through each and every component you can find out the potential drop if you know the current passing through it. So, the same set of equations you can actually also write it for the uh, peak values. So, if I want to find out peak value across the resistor it would be peak value of current into resistance peak value of voltage across the capacitor is peak current into XC. Same goes with peak value across the inductor as well. So, it would be current which is peak into XL. So, any set of equation which is valid for any particular voltage or current, it can be instantaneous RMS or peak. Any equation which is valid for any one kind of voltage current is valid for the other two as well. So, any equation which you write for peak value is also valid for RMS as well as the instantaneous values. So, the next that we have is phasor diagram. So, you can see current is in a particular direction, your VR will be in the same phase, VL will be leading by 90 degree, VC will be lagging by 90 degree. So, how uh, we solve three vectors which are in these particular directions, we take the result into all the three. So, total potential which is applied V will be the sum of VR, VC and VL and because they behave as vectors, we will do the vector sum. So, for vector sum, we can directly see VL, VC are in opposite direction. So, uh, by default, we have taken VL's length as more compared to VC, which means more voltage we have assumed to be dropped across the inductor compared to the capacitor. If that is the case, net voltage across this line would be how much? Either VL minus VC if VL is greater or VC minus VL if VC is greater. So, I am taking here VL minus VC, why? Because here we have assumed that it is an inductive circuit, hence voltage drop across, by default voltage drop across the inductor is considered to be more. So, I will just consider it in that way, so I will get VL minus VC here, VR I will be as it is. Now, the final resultant would be VR and VL minus VC, angle between them is 90 degree. So, when two vectors are at 90 degree, the resultant is what? Root of A square plus B square plus 2 A B cos 90 or simply root A square plus B square. Here the A vector is VL minus VC, B vector is VR. So, total voltage would be resultant of VR and VL minus VC. So, we will get the applied voltage as if we assume the peak value of applied voltage as E naught, it can be written as root of V naught R square plus V naught L minus V naught C whole square or in simple language you can write V applied as equal to root of VR square plus VL minus VC whole square because this whole is my A this hole is my B. Simply angle between A and B is 90 degree. So, if you look at this, we can actually form a triangle. You can see here, this is your VR, this is your applied voltage which is basically the resultant of VR and VL minus VC which is V applied and this is VL minus VC. And this is the angle made by applied voltage with respect to the current you can see. So, this is known as the phase difference between voltage which is applied and the current flowing in the circuit. So, you can say phi is the phase difference between voltage and current and this triangle is known as potential triangle in your series LCR circuit. Now, if you just simply remove the voltages, replace them by their respective current into restrictions, then VL minus VC would be how much? I into XL minus I into XC. VR would be I into R and when you come to V applied, it would be I into Z where Z is the impedance. So, impedance is nothing but uh, the total resistance which is uh, applied by the entire three series circuits, whichever series uh, components are present, whatever is the net restriction which is posed by these three components is known as your impedance. So, here if you see, you can replace, currents will get cancelled. So, you will get another triangle here, this will be impedance, this is XL minus XC and this is R. This is known as impedance triangle. So, using 
these two triangles you can find out phi if you calculate phi from this triangle let's say tan phi any phi is you can calculate sin cos tan anything but by default we take it as tangent so tan phi would be vl minus vc by vr that is one method so you can first find out tan phi as vl minus vc divided by vr another method is in terms of your impedances or resistances so here from tan phi you can find out xl minus xc by r so another formula is xl minus xc by r so any one of these you can use depending on what is given to you accordingly just use it you will get the value of phi once you get phi you get the v applied you can find out the current also by using impedance so the same results are written here you can go through it rms value also same result is valid like i told you whichever equation is valid for peak value is valid for instantaneous and rms also same goes here what is impedance whatever equation is valid for your voltage is the same just replace your erms by i into z i into z vr rms by i rms into r vl rms by i rms into xl just replace all the values i gets cancelled i rm is basically gets cancelled you will get be getting the value of z uh, simply z is equal to you can cancel out i z is equal to root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square this is the value of impedance of the circuit now what was the z nothing but e divided by i now, now this e and i can be set of either peak values rms values or instantaneous values it will still give you the value of z so these are the few things that you have to always keep in mind the last part was your uh, phase difference which we have already seen these are the values you can write the same values in terms of rms peak or uh, instantaneous values and then comes your power factor now what is power factor you can see that you got v applied in this direction and current in this direction so if you look at the components of current it can have two components one is i cos phi component and the other component is i sin phi component if you look at the cos phi component of current it is present along the uh, voltage direction or not direction exactly but along the phase of the uh, voltage which means that if you calculate power along this along this component you will get a, a certain maximum value of power but if you look at the power which is dissipated along this phase there is no voltage component in this phase which means minimum power will be dissipated that is why cos phi is known as the phase factor and this component of current that you get i cos phi is known as watt full current component and this component which gives least or negligible or zero value of power is known as your wattless current so this is nothing but your power factor from impedance triangle you can calculate cos phi it is r divided by z so that's all that's it about your power factor as well you can also use uh, instead of r by z we are by e so basically you can replace r by i you just multiply i on denominator and numerator you will get these forms then comes instantaneous values so we have just now seen current is i not sin omega t there is a phase difference of phi between current and voltage so general equation of voltage can be written as e not sin omega t plus phi then individual vr vr i has no phase difference so v not r sin omega t phase difference between vc and i is pi by 2 wherein uh, the potential is going to lag behind so minus pi by 2 v l when you t uh, take a cross inductor there is a lead of voltage by phase of pi by 2 so v not l sin omega t plus pi by 2 is what you obtain so these are the formulas related to lcr cd circuit each and every formula is important and in any question you can directly use this concept rather than remembering multiple formulas go with the basic draw the phasor diagrams and make sure that each and every point of the phasors how did we get the phasor what all triangles we have studied what is wattless current wattful current how do you define phase difference these all things if conceptually is clear to you no formulas you have to remember just a single uh, phasor diagram you have to draw and from therein you can find out all the formulas related to it thank you all i hope all of you have enjoyed the class